let's switch it up and go to something different, which is visual arts. This is just a video that we pulled off from the net, but Fontaine, since you're doing more art content, we thought that this might be more relevant for you. So we'll just let this play and let Kieran, Sarah, and Yumna have a go at it. So I think we we're just talking about the lighting. Look, it looks like this person is also using natural light. It's a bit dark for us. Yeah. Uh, Sarah, do you have any tips for lighting? For uh, yeah, yeah. For starters, you can see she probably has a window on the left part, but she doesn't have any other light that support the other part, the other corner. So I would say either to put the second light and use a field light to, to feel that darkness or uh, an artificial light. Or if you don't have any light available, maybe you can use a reflector or even a white cardboard, just work fine. And you have to orientate it. Okay, see so this, is, if this is your main sort of light, then you put the reflector here and the light bounces off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Thanks. <laughs> that worked. It would bright then a little yeah. bit the, the scene. Yeah. Um, light okay. source technically is fine, but we just want to, to have light on the, yeah. on the top right as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we would add a reflector on the top right side so yeah. that the light reflects from the light source from there and then like exactly. fills up that part of the corner. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. You can always work with natural light. Actually, natural light looks really pretty when it works, mm -hmm. but you just want to make sure it doesn't get too shadowy and you can easily solve that. If you are working with natural light, ideally you want to work with diffuse light. So mm -hmm. if it's a cloudy day, it's already diffused for you. Otherwise, you can put up a white sheet on your window and that's a diffuser you can do from home. Make them happen. What about where you put the whiteboard? So like, say, like the right side of this picture, if the window was there, correct? Mm -hmm. Would you put the whiteboard to the left of her picture? If we have the window here, something it's like the, that. Yeah. I would put the, yeah, the reflector over here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. More or less. Or if not, you could also, because I was thinking, wait, you can use another light, another source of light, but always what it works a lot and very good. If you have like a source of light okay. in there, but high up and tilt mm -hmm. and very diffuse. Mm -hmm. then you feel all the shadows and you you have a nice light with no harsh shadows and don't kill this light neither so mm -hmm. that would work just fine too another Sorry. thing was we like her set design she has the tray in the background but it doesn't seem like it was thoughtful it should either be part of the set design or not part of the set design so here, what I would have done is a tray. I would have just put it a little bit more and maybe tilted it more. And also there, there's some bowl on the top left. So either yeah. include it or not include it. Yeah. Can I make a comment? Please, yeah. One of the difficult things about teaching at a diagonal is that a student is constantly turning their head to the side. Mm -hmm. And I agree with you. I think that you should be closer, that this should be vertical and that it should not be at a diagonal. It, it's just too hard yeah. for someone who's trying to replicate this mm -hmm. to be sitting there with their head turned yeah. to get the full feeling. And, and the, my second comment is, is that the one thing you absolutely have to avoid is your hand casting a shadow onto this. Mm. So you, you have two or three lights, which can push from uh, towards you, even though you're being blasted by light as the artist. Yeah. It allows your shadows to cast into your body rather onto that. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing with multiple lights it's you need to orientate your lights to the same direction yeah because if you put the lights crossing then you have double or quadruple uh, shadows mm -hmm. for fontaine purposes if you have a table here and your camera is sitting in front of you then you have two lights 
next to the cameras or behind the cameras, hide up and tilt 45 degrees, probably something like that. Then you don't create everything. It's super bright. Uh, you don't create any shadow and yeah. everything you, everything is light. So yeah. that is, it's so easy. All but, hmm. the lights that I have are, are right now at about a 45 degree angle. Yeah. I just turned one off. But they're all flexible. Mm -hmm. Before I start my class, I'm probably about a good half hour before I'm on there, I'm moving because I have natural light coming into the room, so I'm competing with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So I have to have um, my different lamps so that they're completely flexible. And this one here, mm -hmm. you can choose how warm or how cool it is, and it's fully bendable but i i intend to buy something to bounce the light off the oh. ideal situation is to have that soft like when mm. when you're having your portrait taken you have this umbrella or something which will collect yeah, the light and, box. Huh. and right and knock it back towards you mm -hmm. so yeah, like I, I, mm -hmm. You can always use a filter if you need it, like a CT, CTO or CTV, like orange or blue, depends on the light uh, that it's coming from your window. Because let's say it's winter, then the natural light is going to be blue. So you need to balance that. So you put right. a CTV. Hmm. 